Hello learners, my name is Dr. Nidhi Singh, I am Assistant Professor of Geography and today we are going to learn about Earth's interior and its material second part. So today we will be dealing with the topics which are weathering, types of weathering and its importance, soil formation, gradation, soil horizon, erosion, types of erosion and conservation of soil. So, these are the topics we will be covering today. First of all, weathering. What is weathering? Weathering is the combined action of all processes that cause rock to disintegrate. And this disintegration of rocks takes place with the help of physical weathering as well as chemical weathering or both. So, at the same time physical weathering can also take place and chemical weathering can also take place and maybe separately also. So, because of exposure near the earth surface, weathering of rocks takes place. So, how through what means that, uh, does the disintegration takes place? This is with the help of elements of weather and these are temperature, rainfall, frost, fog and ice. Now, this weathered material which is disintegrated and decomposed lies in C2 that means it lies at its original place. Here transportation of material is not involved. So, weathering purely means disintegration of rocks and the sediments, the disintegrated material is, lies there, then and there only. Here transportation is not involved. When transportation occurs, it, it is different from weathering. Now, there are three types of weathering. One is physical weathering, second is chemical weathering and third is biotic weathering. First, we will be dealing with the physical weathering. Physical weathering means breaking up of rocks in smaller fragments. There is no chemical change that is involved in this kind of weathering. Therefore, it is also known as mechanical weathering. There are different types of mechanical or physical weathering. One is block disintegration, second is exfoliation and third is frost action. Now, we will be dealing with all these three types of mechanical or physical weathering in detail. Now, first of all block disintegration. What is this block disintegration? It is the successive heating and cooling of uh, rocks and then uh, expansion and contraction of rocks and then disintegration according to that. So, what happens? that in hot deserts or in arid areas that there, there is lots of difference between the day and night temperature. So, there is the diurnal range of temperature is very high. Diurnal range means the difference between day and night. So, the temperature difference between day and night is very large. So, what happens during the daytime due to heat the uh, rocks expand and then during the night time when there is very low temperature, the rocks contract. So, due to this expansion and contraction of rocks, uh, cracks or joints occur and then gradually uh, these cracks or joints expand and then disintegration of rocks takes place. In the picture, you can see the example of block disintegration. So, the rock is being disintegrated in blocks, blocks, several blocks you can see. So, gradually what happens, these blocks are further broken down and then further and further and very small particles of rocks uh, are formed. Now, second example of or second type of physical weathering is exfoliation. Here what happens that since rocks are poor conductors of heat, but intense heating of rocks, what happens? The outer layer of the rock expands rapidly while the inner layers of the uh, rocks are unaffected due to heat in initial stages. So, what happens? That outer layer expands and contracts and gradually the outer layer peels off from the main area of the rock. So, there are concentric shells that are formed. So, it peels off like a, an, a peel of onion. So, shells small uh, thin shells or thin layers are formed and then they peel off. This is known as exfoliation. It generally happens where there is uh, intense heat is there and there is contraction expansion of rocks. 
In the picture, you can see the example of exfoliation. Here, there is a main rock, which is inner layer of the rock, which is intact, slightly intact, although cracks are also formed in that. And then the outer layers, you can see there are several layers, uh, which have been pointed out with red arrow, and these gradually peel off. So, uh, from a certain area, uh, in an oval uh, shape, the inner layer of this rocks can be seen and the outer layer has already been peeled off uh, in a concentric ring form. Now, the example of exfoliation which we can find in India is the rounded dolerite blocks of rocks in Singhbhum district of uh, Bihar and Jharkhand, then uh, granite domes of Mahabalipuram and the Krishna ka Laddu, the famous rock of uh, Mahabalipuram is an example of exfoliation. Then Madan Mahan hills of uh, Jabalpur, there also you can see uh, exfoliated rocks. Now the third type of physical weathering uh, is frost action. It basically takes place in cold climates. What happens that uh, uh, there are certain cracks and joints that are there in the rock. So what happens? The water get inside uh, these cracks and joints and then freezes. At the night time, the water freezes. So, we all know when uh, water changes into solid, it expands and uh, the volume increases by 10 percent. So, it exerts pressure on the uh, walls of the joints and cracks in the rock. So, what happens? The cracks and joints get enlarged and gradually, uh, slowly this process, if this process continues, so there is disintegration of rocks. So, this is known as uh, disintegration of rocks by frost action. You can see in the picture also how water gets penetrated into the rocks and joints, it solidifies and then exerts pressure and then when again water, um, the ice uh, gets transformed into water, it again contracts and then this process goes on. In the picture, you can see an example of frost action. So, this is a cold climate area, you can see ice can be seen at the backdrop and then uh, in stages you can see the first, the, uh, the front most uh, uh, side of the rock, you can see very thin joints or cracks. Then in the next stage, you can see little uh, separated joints, little broader joints and in the third, the last uh, layer you can see the joints are wide apart. So, the disintegration process is already taking place at a large scale at the uh, third stage, the third layer that is there. So, this is an example of frost action, weathering uh, done through frost action. Now, the second type of weathering apart from physical weathering is chemical weathering. So, what is chemical weathering? Chemical weathering is basically the change which occurs in the rocks and then a chemical change and then the rocks get disintegrated. So, the chemical change in rocks through formation of new compounds or formation of new substances takes place. There is decomposition of rocks by chemical process with the help of water and atmospheric gases. There are different types of chemical weathering. One is oxidation. In oxidation, as the name suggests, uh, there is involvement of atmospheric oxygen and it reacts with rocks and forms oxides. This is mainly uh, found mainly uh, commonly in ferrous minerals where rusting of iron takes place. In the picture, you can see the red colored rocks. So, this is the formation of oxides. So, this is basically a rock which is rich in iron. So, uh, coming in contact with oxygen of the atmosphere and water, the, uh, the um, iron content is changed into um, oxides and uh, rusting of iron is taking place. So, it is red in color. Some of the areas you can see it is red in color. So, basically this is rusting of iron mineral that is formed in the rock and then gradually disintegration of rocks takes place. This area becomes little weaker and then disintegration of rocks takes place through chemical weathering and the process is precisely known as oxidation. Second type of chemical weathering is carbonation. Here what happens that it is various types of carbonates are formed. Some of these carbonates are soluble in water and then the, this disintegrates in the rock and then uh, flows away with the uh, rainwater. So, the rainwater containing carbon dioxide passes through 
pervious limestone rocks. So this is mainly found in limestone rocks. So what happens that rock joints get enlarged by the action of carbonic acid and then disintegration of rocks takes place. So the lime is removed in solution. You can see in the picture the example of uh, limestone rock is given. So you can see it is little pervious. Pervious means it is easily disintegrated. Water can percolate inside it that is known as pervious. So uh, water gets inside it, it can penetrate, it is little softer. So uh, the holes that you can see in the picture on the rock is there an example of chemical weathering that is taking place and then water gets inside the rock and then rock gets soluble and then it gets washed away and disintegrates. So this is an example of chemical weathering and precisely carbonation. The third type of chemical weathering is hydration. In this what happens that water is absorbed by minerals of the rock. So the volume of the rock increases and then due to the gaining of moisture inside the rock particles. It is basically found in uh, the area where the rock is made up of feldspar. So feldspar is changed into kaolin with the help of hydration or chemical weathering. Kaolin of on Vindhyan hills near Jabalpur is an example of uh, this type of weathering the, in India. So this is another type of chemical weathering. Fourth type of chemical weathering is solution. Here what happens some of the minerals get dissolved in water and removed in solution. They, the minerals get dissolved in water and with the water they get dissolved and, and re get removed. Rock salt and gypsum are removed in this manner. In the pictures, the first picture is an example of hydration. Here kaolin, you can see feldspar has been changed into kaolin, the white rocks. And then the second example is of solution. So the holes that are found in the, on the rock is basically the uh, air, minerals have been removed from the rock through solution and the holes are found formed on the rock surface. Now the third type of third major type of uh, weathering is biotic weathering. This is carried out by plants, animals and humans. So first of all we will be dealing with the type of biotic weathering which is done by plants. So what happens you must have seen uh, anywhere if you have gone through some uh, in some vegetative area where jungle or something like that. So what happens roots of the plant they penetrate inside the rocks. If there is a thin joint so the roots of the plant get penetrated in that and then gradually they thicken. So what happens they exert pressure from the rock they have uh, they get inside the rock from the joints and then they exert pressure on the walls of the rocks or the joints. So they get enlarged and gradually disintegration of rocks takes place into smaller fragments. Now another type of biotic weathering is through animals. You, we all know rodents, rats and uh, termites, rabbits, earthworms etc. They live uh, in uh, soil and gradually what they do they burrow they make holes in that and uh, they disintegrate the rocks. Disintegrated rocks can easily be eroded and removed by wind or water etc. The third type of uh, biotic weathering is caused by humans. So activities like agriculture, construction of houses, roads, blasting for extracting minerals and rocks etc are involved in this and querying of mining minerals, weathering by breaking down and weakening and loosening of rocks and soil takes place by this. So human activity is also responsible for uh, biotic weathering and then disintegration of rocks. Now examples of biotic weathering you can see in the picture. The first one is by plants. Here you can see the roots of plants have uh, penetrated deep inside the rocks and they are exerting pressure and gradually the rocks are being dissected into fragments and disintegration of rocks is taking place. Another uh, picture you can see, the holes you can see. So the burrowing animals have made uh, holes, their homes and then gradually they disintegrate the softer rocks and uh, soil along with that. Now what is the importance of weathering? Why are we studying this? In the importance of weathering is that it helps in formation of different types of land features that are produced in areas of different types of climates through weathering. Another importance of weathering is it helps in the formation of soil. So basically uh, uh, soil formation helps in providing us the basis for agriculture which 
ultimately helps in supply of food to all the living organisms now weathering is related to formation of soil so in the figure you can see the process of soil formation so the first step for process of soil formation is weathering so weathering is important in this aspect as we uh, already discussed it that is it, it helps in formation of soil so the first stage is weathering which results in disintegration of rocks so fine powder of rocks gets formed then these uh, fine powder or sediments get deposited in layers and then organic matter is added to it through biotic weathering uh, in this in the sediments and then soil of varied color and texture is formed so there is a whole process of formation of soil which starts from weathering disintegration then formation of fine powder or sediments and then deposition of these uh, sediments into layers adding of uh, organic matter and then formation of soil of different color and texture now another aspect that will be studying is gradation so now what is gradation gradation is basically leveling of land so leveling means if there are undulations in land and they they get leveled so this process of leveling is known as gradation of soil gradation process and this is mainly uh, due to the uh, exogenetic forces uh, happening or taking place on the earth surface we all know now exogenetic processes are uh, acting on the surface of the earth and endogenetic forces act inside the earth surface so uh, this leveling of land is known as gradation the attempt of this uh, gradation is to achieve a condition of balance between erosion and deposition so these two are the terms we'll be dealing with in detail erosion and deposition now so the basic aim of gradation is uh, to achieve a balance between erosion and deposition now what are the agents of gradation agents of gradation are rivers glaciers winds sea waves and underground water so with the uh, help of these agents gradation takes place or the leveling of land takes place and this happens with the help of triple action of weathering erosion and deposition so all three processes these actions take place and then leveling of land happens erosion what is erosion will uh, we are using this term time and again so erosion is basically leveling down of elevated earth surface so if there is an elevated earth surface when it's lowered down leveled down we call it erosion it's eroded and then deposition is filling up of the depression so there is a depression and then sediments etc get filled up in this so this is known as deposition erosion is leveling of the elevated earth surface and deposition is the filling up of the depressions so there are two types of gradation as you can see in the figure one is degradation that is lowering of land and a gradation that is filling up of land or depressions first we'll be dealing with degradation rocks are disintegrated by scraping scratching and cutting and this whole process is known as erosion this eroded material is then removed through transportation so that there is lowering of the elevation elevated land so there is lowering of elevated land with the help of scraping scratching cutting and then transportation of the material whereas a gradation is filling up of the low lying or depressed areas with the help of these eroded material agents of gradation experience some kind of obstruction in their way so what what happens that at the place of obstruction the, they said uh, deposit the sediments then and there so gradually deposition starts taking place and then there is a new type of landform is formed and a gradation takes place in the figure you can see the process of gradation so first of all there is elevated land you can see upland is there so it gets wear down the erosion takes place and then transportation takes place and where wherever there is depression there is filling up of this depression with the help of transported material from the higher land so there is a base level uh, above this base level is the upland from where erosion erosion is taking place and transportation of sediments is taking place and then there is deposition or agradation is taking place in the 
डिप्रेस्ड एरिया 